Hey, thanks for tuning in to Big Air TV. Today we're talking about the installation of a Big Air Wave Tower. As you can see, it's already on the boat here, but we're going to go back in this video through unpacking the boxes, uh, setting the parts up, and installing it on the boat. But while we're still here with the tower in place, let's talk about how great a tower this is. It's one of our premium towers. So much beautiful billet polished plate with the cutouts. Uh, it's got the razor racks that we've improved in 2016 with gusting. We've got our lateral stabilizer system, our stainless system there that enhances the strength of this tower. Um, this thing is just, I'm moving the boat, I'm not moving the tower. That's how strong this thing is. We love it. You can run wires internally all the way down to the bottom of the legs without them showing. There's all types of great options for this tower. It is a premium tower. You will not be disappointed. So come along with me as we talk about the installation of a big airway tower. All right, we've got our wave tower here in the studio in boxes. We've untaped it and ready to show you what you get when it arrives from UPS driver on your door. These are UPS to your door shippable products like all of our towers from Big Air. And the wave is the only one that actually comes in two boxes. Uh, it ships very nicely. We do two boxes because the size of the, uh, the legs are quite large. They're one piece with the billet plating on there. And because that structure, we like to keep them separate so they ship better and don't get damaged. In remote chance, it's very rare that you do get a damaged item. If you find a hole in the box or something protruding, stop and call us. Our number is on the box uh, and we'll get you some fresh parts right away and UPS will take care of things. But please don't proceed with any damaged parts. It makes it difficult for us. So take a picture of any parts or any damage and, and let us know and email them to us and we'll get you taken care of right away. Right away. Once again, that's very uncommon, but I thought we'd address that in this video. Uh, with that said, I've got what's in the box. Well, I've got my instructions. Follow these things. That's what they're here for. A lot of good details and tricks that we've learned along the way that we'll talk about here today, but also that you've got in print. Um, as I look through this box, I see my parts box up there for all my hardware. These are my wake forks that go on here. You can also upgrade this tower to uh, combos, triples, whatever, but it starts at the platform with wake forks. I got my H member here. I've got, this should be my, um, port side leg and my starboard over here, uh, my H member corners and my rear set corners and what we call our front legs and they're, they're flat plates there. This tower is really relatively easy to install. It's super strong and super stylistic. It's one of our premium towers. And as we put it together here in the studio, you're really gonna see uh, what a great unit is and how easy it is to install. So uh, let's get on to our next step of getting this tower together and onto the boat. All right, we've got our tower unboxed unwrapped and just laid out just for your convenience. You can inventory the parts if you like like this, but this is more so we can show you what to expect. Uh, once again, let's talk about what we have here. I have my port side leg or passenger side, my starboard side leg, and these are the front legs. They're the same, they're symmetrical if you will. You can interchange them. My H members up here. I have my corners, my front corners, and then my back, we'll call them struts so they go into your H member there um, and then my LSBs these are one of the critical things to make the wave tower probably one of the strongest towers on the market it's a uh, color lateral or LSB or lateral stabilizer bars and they serve the tension I don't have my parts box in this photo or my wave uh, forks but we'll show those later but this is the basic inventory that you will get for your tower all right we're going to do some sub assembly here before we erect the tower if you will uh, I've got my starboard leg here with the front leg and I also have my leg in here. Very simple device that's going to go in there. There's a hidden or stealth connection in here. What I've got is a leg in. You can see the device here and it's going to go right in the bottom of the leg. I've inserted a, a uh, M10 by 40 millimeter uh, with a actual lock washer. Uh, we also like to run some blue Loctite on there also. I'm just gonna slide it up in there. I'll you take my Allen wrench and just tighten it up. I won't have to get it very tight until I'm ready for final assembly, but I'll want it snug. I'm just gonna bump it up there. You get the gist. It's connected in there. I'll bump it up with my Allen wrench supplied. Now I'm also at the same time gonna go ahead and attach my front leg to the, to the rear leg section. 
And it's done quite simply. We've got a stainless steel shaft here with a neural on the end. And so all you do is lift it up into alignment there. there both parts are interchangeable, so you can't get them backwards. I'm just going to slide that in there, find myself, push on through there, lift up a little bit, and push. I'm going to take my hammer now, and I'm going to use a, a soft hammer here not to damage it. And then the neural is still there, and I'll take a uh, probably a ball bean hammer and finish driving that in. But that allows us a nice fit with nylon bushings and allows the adjustability that you need on the wave tower. All right, we're going to take a quick moment here to talk about wiring of wave tower. Uh, basically, a lot of times we're going to want to go through the H member of the head, but the secret really, and it's really quite easy to do this, is we have wiring passages. If you look here, and th this is the rear part of the H or the rear corner or connector, however you want to call it, and we have a wiring passage already through here. So if we're wiring our H member, the wiring is running through the tubing out this connection. And if you can see here, into here. Now, the only thing, if you're running, whether it be port or starboard, that's your choice. You would need to go and take a drill bit and finish the completion of the bottom of this hole and just drill through here. And then you're actually going to be in the same type of channel right here. At that point, we can go ahead and pull the wire on down through here. You'll just take a bend and head on down to whichever side leg you choose. And it'll go all the way down to the bottom of the leg. At that point, we recommend that you go ahead and drill an exit hole and put a grommet there and go into the gunnel of your boat there. But it's very quite easy, but you have to choose which hole. Probably take you 30 seconds to drill that hole. We're not doing it here today because we're not wiring this particular tower, but that is how you do it and that's how simple it is. All right, we've actually put the tower together, the wave tower together now, and we're gonna talk about how we did that. And basically we used our 10 millimeter by 35 two bolt connectors here on our front corner, and then we've also got our rear connector or corner, however you want to call this rear piece. Same bolt, 10 by 35s here. They have a lock washer, and we're going to use uh, lock, blue Loctite in there. Now, we've got them very, very loose here. You can almost see the heads, they're just probably five or six full threads in, very loose. We want these to be very flexible and loose at this time. Now, what we did was, for convenience on the camera, we bolted these on first and then slid the H member on and did the same for the other side and slid it into the H member. There are plastic liners right here. These are made to help you not scratch your tower up. So we actually slide them outward halfway and slide the tube inside the liner and then we slide in. Now what we don't want to make do during when we're doing an installation like this, I don't want to slide the tip of the corner past my second bolt hole. That way I ensure that I don't scratch uh, the polish or the polish finish or powder coat, whatever you have. We also, a lot of times, will actually go ahead and run a little grease, like some lithium grease, and it actually makes it more lubristic and easier to slide around also, even with the plastic liners. This, once again, will help, help you out, and you can clean it later on. A little degreaser or simple green will take any grease off, so don't worry about that. I'm wearing gloves today just so that everything looks uh, nicer for the video there. So once again, these are loose. Those are loose and we've slid it in and we're just probably to the first hole so we know we won't go any deeper than we need to. Uh, beyond that, this tower is virtually ready to stand up and then we'll go to our boat and begin to address uh, the measurements that we need for our boat. But quick, I'll stand it up real quick and we'll do a quick shot of that. All right, let's talk about our soft assembly of our wave tower today. We're virtually the tower assembled here in the, in the studio. You can do the same thing in your living room, your yard, uh, your garage, wherever. Just be careful not to, to drop it. I know it sounds uh, minor, but it's a big deal. You could damage your tower. So secure your, uh, your front legs so they don't slide out on you. We've got it on a drop cloth, so that's not going to happen. Uh, but we're not also slid our tower in too much like we talked about. We've got our plastic liners. Uh, you should grease these to kind of help you out. But we kept fairly wide stance until we find out what the stance of our boat is. Now, what we have to do now is we have to go look at the mounts on our boat and determine what the width is between them on the rear mounts. So let's use a number, let's say it's 90 inches from mount to mount. We like to do some preload on our towers, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that our bottom mounts in our studio is at least 6 inches narrower. So if it's 90 inches there, we want to make it at 84. At that point, we would keep sliding them in until uh, we hit equal distance, you know, we'll measure from the corner here, or this mark here, the joint to the edge there, till they're equal distance. But we're not ready, I don't know that number yet, but that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna preload our tower, 
six inches narrower and we'll get those steps but this is soft assembly the beginning of it and we'll go measure our boat and go from there all right we measured our boat uh, this boat our mount point width at the rear and we're only talking about the rear is 97 inches so we're going to take six inches off in this case uh, you can do a little more if you want it's up to you how much preload we don't really want to see any less than six inches and so if you come with me on our tower it's really easy on these since we have the straight bar and, and simple measurement marks so we come off of here and with a sharpie we just put six eight ten fourteen Th these will wipe right off with a little bit of a carb cleaner or any type of cleaner they'll come right off it won't hurt your finish i've still got my plastic liners you can see these right here and, and they're going to protect our tube as we slide it in and out so in this case i know i need to come in about six inches on this and so i've got almost three inches left before I get this tower to 91 at the bottom, at, this, at the mounts on my legs, on my rear legs. And so I've got my plastic liners here. I should have a little more grease, but we're okay for this uh, demonstration. I'm still loose on my junction bolts. I don't want this tower in a bind yet. And they, although if you tighten them up too much, they'll get tight. So leave them loose, it's okay. And then I should be able to hopefully slide this in. There it goes right there, I'm gonna slide it in and I've gone to my 14 inch, I don't know if you can see, it's just right there on the edge, I've got. So I've got my distance there. Now, I've got everything bolted here. I'll go ahead and drill my, uh, I'll use the 3 8 but you can also use a, um, a 7 16 uh, bolt here also if you want, but we do a 3 8 and we can get through there. It's a metric uh, 10 millimeter going through there. So a 3 8 would be a little tight, but I'll drill that and I'll secure it. I'll double check my measurements one more time once I slide it in, but then my tower will be secure and we'll be ready to go to the boat at that time. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. Once again, each side I've come in and I've got my hatch marks there. Okay, we're ready to drill the hole. Just a real quick video, I've got a 3 8 bit. Once again, you can use the 7 16 if you want more of a little oversized. We kind of like them tight and we'll, we'll kind of thread the bolt through. I've done some of the other holes. One of the secrets on when you're drilling here is that you actually have to come from the interior for both sides. You do not want to drill all the way through. You will not be able to match the hole. So I've got this one started. Once again, I've got a 3 8 bit. Very important, you use safety glasses. You don't want a metal chip in your eye and we really want you to be safe and have a successful tower installation. So I about got it done here. You know, just get a good load on there. Once again, it's so nice because I don't have to do this on the boat. I can do this on in your yard or wherever. So, oh, got a little bite there. Just like that. Now, once again, I'm not gonna drill through. I'll come to the back side and get the shot on there and you'll be a little angle off don't worry about that the bolt head will cover that up and we'll have this thing bolted up and ready to go on the boat and do the install quickly okay we're ready to put our base mounts in we've gone and put the tower actually on the boat very cautiously i recommend you get three people uh, to do this one for each side and one for the front and the reason we've got this sitting on here is to make sure as we install this that this tower will go into the cavity of the boat and rest like we want. We've got it sitting on some boards up here, gasket here to protect it, and we've laid it out. We know we're gonna be okay. We check both sides. I've measured up here. I've measured three times. I've used my, what we call a T-square method to actually ensure that we got our benchmark the same. Go to our video gallery at Big Air and you'll find where we're doing a T-square method. We run a string line from the front to the back and a very large T-square. And we come out here and we measure from there to a point and that way we guarantee you cannot measure off cleats and different body uh, geometry of the boat it's just not a safe way to do it so you have to trust the center line of the boat to get the true benchmark to find it so we found it here we marked both sides i actually cheated a little bit for the video and i've actually started this hole here obviously i've taped over it to protect i've used a gasket to mark my hole where i want and then i've just made a circle and i've gone in with a pilot bit I used a quarter or through us probably five sixteenths there and then i've actually got my nine sixteenths bit for this single bolt mount i'm going to drill through here i've ran my bit in reverse and once again i measured several times i've checked the back side of the hole i want to know what's back there so i've examined this boat's internals to make sure i'm not going to wiring looms control lines or who knows what but i'm all clear this is a great easy install there and so i'm just going to run this bit in reverse here real quick and we'll finish this uh, this bit. The reason what reason we run them in reverse is so it won't grab the gel coat and pull pull some there. So I 
I'm good there. And then I'm going to use a dress stone, to, which is you can get at Ace Hardware. It's just a, a ceramic stone. And it'll dress out this hole and put a chamfer on there so we don't propagate fractures in the brittle or the hard gel coat surface. Okay, we're actually setting our tower in final position. As you know, previously we've already have our rear mounts in place. Uh, we checked for fit. That's all in place. We've attached them. We have our swivels in place. They're critical here. So we have our mount, a swivel, and then of course the, the leg gain on the tower itself here. So they're not, they're not really tight. We've got the base snug, but uh, we're not, we don't over tighten things yet. We want some movement there if we need it. Uh, we, we went ahead, these are actually free here if you look. And so we let them come into place. We've set them and lightly bumped all the bolts here. We have a swivel and then we actually have our base here. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky sometimes measuring for a boat. This boat, we found the floor to be inconsistent, rising one inch from left to right, or port to starboard, if you will. Um, and so what we've gone is we're going on the rub rail on this boat because we're more concerned about the aesthetics as you see it sitting in the water. So we've leveled the top of the tower, as you can see also, we've hung with a strap there. You can use a tree or you could actually prop it up interior with a board or something like that. And you'll need that, some way to support it when you're doing this process. And now we've done that, but we measured several times from this rub rail up to the corners of this tower to make sure that it's tight. We've measured, measured, and remember, it's not just a front to back level. We're also checking left to right. And so that's also why we measure from the rub rail up to key points on the tower and consistently. We've come to about with an eighth or a quarter inch variance on this, which isn't bad. We're happy with that. We'll get the visual we want on the tower. And so now I've gone in with a pencil, circled out my base, I'll pull back this leg and then I'll actually put a gasket right up here. I'll pencil mark the center, drill a hole, and put the base in there and, and then we'll be ready to go forward and to the next chapter. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna talk about our LSB system that we're using on the wave tower. The wave tower is a forward swept tower and it's a sizable tower. And because of that, we wanna make sure we give you plenty of reinforcement to, to guarantee that it doesn't move side to side. That's a big issue with a lot of cheaper towers or inferior towers. And so there's a unique device that we use actually on this. And it's basically a, a triangulated um, stability device with um, tethers or if you will, or turnbuckles. And so what we're gonna do is this, this top piece here, stainless piece goes over the head of the tower. And then these are actually turnbuckles or tension rods and they're gonna go out to the sides or the ribs of the interior of the legs of the tower. They won't be in your way and we'll actually bring them into tension. So, but this is our LSB system. It's all stainless, so there's no issues there. And we're just gonna put it on there and show you how it works, but it's a critical part of making sure that you have a super strong tower and it does incredible results for the wave tower. All right, this last part of our installation, our wave tower is on, it's already very secure. And this is where we can finish the uh, installation of our LSBs. Went ahead and put the eyelet on the head. We just screwed off the top head slid the eyelet down on there and reattach them. Uh, you can see our LSBs are here. We're running with the head of the bolt, the stainless bolt up there, the uh, actual heim joint, then the eyelet, and then the nylock underneath so we don't have interference with the rope. We get a good shot right there, so not a problem. Then um, we've gone out and we've extended these, uh, basically you can call them turnbuckles on the LSB bars. We've actually extended them out so we only had a couple threads still engaged on each end. One's left hand, one's right hand, so you'll see that as you play with the action on them. But as we did that, once we had them extended out, we actually reached over here and marked with our plate where we wanted it and made a mark with a sharpie or a piece of tape. And then we actually drilled 5 16 holes here using this eyelet as a template there and then attached everything. You can see once again the bolt head, the hind, the eyelet, a riblet, whatever you want to call it, and then the actual uh, heim, or the um, nylock underneath. And so then with everything secure, we actually use, there's a flat spot milled on these for your wrench to actually bring these into tension. And we just like to get them you know, slightly tight, maybe three or four turns into tight. You don't want to get crazy and bend your uh, tower, but we want to see tension. I'd say three or four uh, rev rotations into tension uh, should be good. This tower is extremely solid. I guarantee I don't think you're going to find another tower as strong as that is when you do this. Now, while we're talking about that, let me drop down and show you. You're going to say, hey, that, that's going to have some clearance issues there. That's not the case. I am six foot tall and I am over here right at the edge of the boat and I still cannot hit my head. If I have a speaker 
A six inch, eight inch speaker is actually gonna be down lower than that. I think I probably got four inches there. So the LSBs do not let anybody tell you that they will have any clearance issues. They do not, and these are awesome what they do. We totally recommend that you run them on your wave tower. They're an awesome device. Don't worry, your speakers will hang down here. And then if you've got an underneath Bimini, you'll have that. But lots of, lots of clearance still, don't worry about it. All right, we're last piece, or one of the final pieces here is gonna talk about our Razor Wake attachments for the uh, wave tower. It's a premium tower, so we like to put premium racks on it. And that's our Razor series. Um, there's four bolts that go on the back here. I don't need to show them to you. They're just, they go through and we can lock tight them or you can use uh, the uh, lock washers on there, stainless fasteners. Simple four bolt pattern with an Allen wrench. Um, and it pushes out, but what's really cool is I've got this bolt loosened up here. I should be backed off. I'll... And what it is, a single bolt allows us to adjust this, just the absolute angle that you want. So if you, if you want some particular angle, or need to adjust to get to perfection, you can do that. Plus this whole rack comes off. Remove this bolt and the rack comes off if you want to store it or for whatever it might be the issue. And then all I've got to do, I'm sure I'm not totally right there, but all I've got to do is tighten this bolt down, one singular bolt, set the angle there. And a lot of these things are rock solid. They won't rotate. We have no problems whatsoever with these rotating on customers. Once that position is tight, you'll be good to go until you're ready to actually remove it. So one Allen wrench, one bolt, very simple razor attachment for wave towers. All right, we're done. As you know, the tower's on the boat, the racks are on, LSBs are in place, everything's done. We're ready to go to the lake. You know all the benefits of this tower, super strong, premium big air product. They're in stock in black, anodized and polished finish. Uh, come get them for 2016 or in the coming years. You're gonna love this tower and we look forward to seeing you at the lake. Thanks again.